this. Yeah. Oh yeah, we're already. All right, everybody. We have uh, we have a live uh, on location episode of uh, the Thrivalist Manifesto with oh, Ben V and Dr. G. Shout out to Drive Four Ninety Five for hosting us. Thank you so much, Don. Saladino. Sal- Saladino. Thank and we're you, Don. in the downtown section of Manhattan in the Tribeca area. Is that correct? Soho. 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 Yeah, it's more Soho. Yeah. Great. So it's going to be loud. It's going to be, uh, you're going to hear some sirens in the background. This yeah. is New York City, and we're here with a really special guest. We came all the way down to see her because she's, I've been in this room for five minutes, and the energy coming out of her is unbelievable. I think we're just going to. Yeah, I'm backing off just, right now. We're just gonna I haven't even started my Care Bear stare yet. I'm backing away right now. <laughs> all right, speak. So we're here with Jen Wiederstrom of, from, the sh- well, the from the show loser, The Biggest Loser, one but of the also, trainers author, also author of a Diet, Diet right, right for Your Personality Type. Look at this, teamwork. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And fitness director for Shape Magazine mm-hmm. and uh, formerly Phoenix <laughs> on the American Gladiator. So from now on, how are we going to say it when we say it? Phoenix. Yeah. <laughs> Only whisper. <laughs> Hi, boy. Thank you for being a guest on the show, The Thrivalist Manifesto, and, you know, welcome to the show. We, you know, we're, we're excited to talk to you a bit because, you know, you're a person that has a different perspective because now you're in the entertainment business, but you're also a coach mm-hmm. on, on a show, you know, having to do with fitness. So you have a different perspective as to what the country, what state the country is sure. in terms of fitness right now. So why don't we just kick it off with that? Oh, wow. Um... You know, it's a funny thing because, you know, Biggest Loser's been on hiatus uh, for a little while and the outpour of people being like, when is it back? When is it back? When is it back? Mm-hmm. And it's not who you think it is asking, you know, would be asking. It's not people that are struggling with weight loss or um, it's it's everyday people of sh- all shapes, sizes, ages, and both genders, all genders. Mm-hmm. And it's just about, this is, you know, Biggest Loser highlights the story of the human condition. The fact that there are hard times, there are challenges, there is struggle, and there is hopefully breakthrough. And I think that the show um, gives me an opportunity to showcase that transition. And I think people are able to see themselves in stories, in sound bites, in the emotion, in the feeling of, man, I was alone like that once too, or I am alone like that. If I could reach out to a Jen, or if I could reach out to a family member, you know what I mean? And, and find the support to kind of move forward in, the, in, in, in life, uh, or out of a dark headspace, or whatever it is, but progress. And I think that's what gets so exciting about the show, and I think why there is outcry for more of it. Um, because you, you talked about America, but it's, like I said, so many people, even though we do have an obesity epidemic, uh, it's one side effect of what's really going on, is weight gain. There's so many other things that go on for people. Mm-hmm. Right. So it seems like the the real uh, attraction of the show, what's like the story behind the story of the Biggest Loser, is they're telling the story, they're telling the tale of the human condition in the context of weight loss. Mm-hmm. But really, the story is people are looking for a guide. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. People need, you know, every Luke Skywalker needs like a uh, a Yoda, Obi- Obi- right? Obi- Some, Obi- right. To get to that next part of your mm-hmm. life. Yeah, but what are we what are, what are we talking about, right? Is it just a coach and a student or a teacher and a student? It's to feel important. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I see you. I hear you. You're nodding and acknowledging me and looking at me back. Mm-hmm. It's like, okay, he's creating a value in me mm-hmm. by spending that time, by spending true focus on me. Mm-hmm. Same with any kind of coach. It starts with something simple like that. This person's going to spend their time talking to me. Mm-hmm. Or that I'm worth that. Mm-hmm. And in the beginning... It's really about believing in that person for the both of you. Mm-hmm. But eventually, they start to take some of that responsibility themselves and start to believe. Because that's that's really what it's about. Mm-hmm. It's about being together. Mm-hmm. It's about finding, you know, people call it tribe. I'm going to say the C word, but <laughs> CrossFit, okay? <laughs> Something that they did really well is they created community. 1,000%. When you say tribe, you're probably referring to Sebastian Younger's book, oh, right? there you go. Yeah, so that's that was the first thing that came to mind when I read the book, mm-hmm. was I was like, these are why these dudes are so successful, is because people want to be a part of a community, and they're held accountable to that community, but when they do something well, they show value to that mm-hmm. entire community, and it's recognized. Mm-hmm. Yep. So this whole, like, I want to be, you know, within this CrossFit community, 
and it, it creates this whole cultic it's feeling. It's acknowledgement, but it's also, so Behavior 101, it's in my book, but people are loss adverse. Mm-hmm. It's a fancy way of saying I am more willing to take action at the thought of losing something than I am gaining. Mm-hmm. So I was like, Benny, okay, sorry. <laughs> You're Benny now. We're best friends, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> Did you get Benny as a kid or always Ben? No, I got he Ben and I got... Be called oh, ben. Yeah, I, he loves to be called Ben. I don't know why I said that. I'm like, but you, you should I'm always Jen- call him Ben. Call me Jenny. <laughs> uh, I was Jenny for a long time. Um, That's so, a whole nother but podcast. I'm like, I'm like, do you, so do you like coffee? I love coffee. Love coffee. So this is a, this is, this is a serious relationship. You're no, in love. This is a real... Okay. Yeah. So if I told you, I will give you, uh, you know, $100,000 if you don't drink coffee for a year. You'd be like, oh, I could use the change. You know, I could think about investing here. I can do this with it. You are more likely to sustain the behavior if I said, you know, Ben, I, um, I'm going to need you to stop drinking coffee for a year, but you're going to owe me 100 k mm-hmm. That loss of the money, right? It's mm-hmm. like the money that you get, you're like, I can kind of do with that. And I'm okay. I've got shoes on my feet. I got, I got air on my lungs. But the thought of losing the money, the loss adverse. So the same thing with you talk about CrossFit Tribe, the book. It's the thought of losing that community, mm-hmm. of not being able to be a part of it anymore. Mm-hmm. That keeps you going. It keeps you going. It's motivated. like, yo, Dr. G, where were you yesterday? We trained. We missed exactly. you, man. That exactly. feeling is like, oh, I don't want to lose mm-hmm. that. Right. Yeah, I don't want to let them down. Yeah. I can't let them down. Yep, accountability. Not I don't feel one. about it, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, uh, I see it happening with very successful programs. I too travel for work. And every once in a while, you're like, wow, that's that's a great business model. But it all boils down to creating a sense of community within whatever that fitness model is. Mm-hmm. Whether it's, you know, classes here or, you know, Tai Chi in the park or CrossFit, you know, that... Yeah, I mean, there, there's other companies that are doing it too. I did a Tough Mudder uh, this. Oh yeah. <laughs> you go to the front of that line. It's not like a marathon where nobody talks to each other. It's like me, me, me. It's yeah. all individualized, and all I care about is my time and my bracket. Yeah. And you go into this this Tough Mudder place, and they're doing a rally. Like they got a guy at the front who's a, a marine or something, sure. and, and the. Really? And the you're do, we're doing this together. We don't care what your time is. Yeah, like you don't go You're responsible for the person behind yes. you, you know? Oh, they, wow. Oh, it's super oh, yeah, there powerful. Was, there was, well, I did it once. <clears throat> where you you got to go in the mud. you got to yeah, climb out. Like, oh. And I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> and somebody helped me. Yeah. And I was like, wait, before I go, uh, you know, let me reach down here and help this person. And, it, it, I mean, even the one, the funniest one, you love this, man. You run, it's like Ninja Warrior. Waterfly. And you sprint and you run all the way up. You try to catch the ledge. Oh, wow. I was like... And I almost started to fall, and somebody grabbed my arm, and they, like, pulled me up. Like, yeah. I wouldn't have no made it. No kidding. Wow. But these strangers I've never met. Mm-hmm. I don't know their names. I'll never see them again. And you'll never forget them, though. And you'll never forget them. <laughs> no, well, because so, you go through that whole thing Let again. me tell you, they're not going to forget me either. I was like, oh, Because <laughs> <laughs> you're so high, it's kind of scary. That's hysterical. <laughs> Tough Mudder. Tough Mudders are yeah, great. But they're a lot again, of fun. You're seeing it in other business models, yeah. and mm. it's not about me, it's about us. I did it with my buddies, and then I took my kids. Mm. I took my teenagers for, oh. for, for the next one. Uh, they, I came home, and I was talking about mud and ice and electrocution. And uh, my kids were like, when, when oh, yeah. are we going to go? <laughs> yeah. So we signed up for the next one. That's so amazing. It's, so it's a family, kind of a lot of families. Whether it's family, it. whether it's team, whether yeah. it's, you know, Off- we meet Whole coaching. offices do it together. Yeah. Yeah. Offices, I know couples. But it's interesting that we're at a point where the three of us are sitting here saying, team, community, together, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Us, not me. Um, but yet so much of what we're doing through social media is dividing oh, us, no you know? It. And I've never been more connected to information and people ever in the world, mm-hmm. like in all time mm-hmm. of my life, but yet I've never felt more isolated. Yeah. If somebody yeah. wrote an article or an op-ed piece that said that it will go down as the biggest paradox in human history. Mm. So something that was created to bring the world together will eventually lead to bringing individuals apart. Right. And I was like, wow, that's yeah. pretty much hits it on the head right yeah. there. It, it's tough though because Maybe it's the way you manage it because I mean I had a gal just this week a gal that lived on my street when I grew up her name's Brooke Kovac hi Brooke we I've known her for my the majority of my life since I can remember when we moved in when I was five and she has a cousin that is in the fitness industry in Chicago he wrote a book she said do you mind if I could connect you and I've like mentored Tyler I wrote the one of the forwards in his book 
and like to run into him at the Arnold and to see people talking to him because of his growth was like that's kind of cool. That's really cool. And I wouldn't have had it without Brooke reaching out to me through a message on social media. Right, right, right. So right. it's right. not all bad. No, right. no, no. You, no, no, you no. take advantage of the opportunity you have to get together with people like Perfect. we're doing right right now. Exactly. exactly. That's and a good example. our phones are yeah. off and we're engaged in a conversation. We're having, you know, we're actually looking at each other mm. in the eye. Yeah, we are. I feel like I was lucky to grow up. I was one of the last generations. To, technically, I'm a millennial. I think it's anybody that was born in 1980 after. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'm an 82 baby. But I feel like I kind of missed it. Like, I still have VHS tapes. Yeah. I, I can't get rid of them. I feel like I'm going to... It's going to turn to a coffee table at some point. Because uh, I have a two-in-one TV. It's like Ben with his eight track tapes. Oh, yeah. He's gotta, you got to go I'm, in his car. He's got to get eight track. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> you just you just <laughs> threw me under the bus. On, literally on Broadway. <laughs> right? On, yeah. 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 So, but it's funny because you think... Uh, I got to kind of live through this evolution of technology and, and understand that we didn't have, we sat at the dinner table as mm -hmm. a family. Um, my, my, there's no TV on. There's nothing. It was, we talked. If you were in a bad mood, you don't feel like that. Don't talk or you're going to eat. You know what I mean? Like it was just, we were together every time, every night. And, and now it's, it's just, it's changed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, it's just changed. So, just to circle back. Yeah, sorry. The, no, no, this is no, great. No, this this, is, look, everybody, this conversation is going in free flow. many it's directions. Free flow. <laughs> exactly. Stream of consciousness here. But uh, you said the, the attraction for the show to come back, to have a resurgence, mm -hmm. had more to do with the community that is being created uh, yeah. through the show. Do you see that happening outside of the television show? You know, it's, it, I think it's what you're kind of highlighting is my goal right now. You know, I, I don't... I've had an interesting couple of years. <laughs> an interesting decade, if you want to go all the way back to Gladiators. Um, I don't want to wait for a TV show or, uh, you know, uh, some sort of publication to say, yep, Jen's valuable, she has a message because she can create something. I don't think we should be waiting anymore for permission to take the step forward, be the leaders in the industry to say, there is something here. Mm -hmm. um, we don't need cameras on to do it. There's a great, there's a great quote. Um, there's no uh, limitation to how far a person can go if they don't mind who gets the credit. Mm -hmm. I love that I can do this and talk with you guys. I'm not doing this to, you know, ca cannibalize your following and get your followers over to my page. This isn't like, you know what I mean? This is about <clears throat> coming together and working together and I, I, most of the events I'm in New York all weekend specifically to, to do FaceTime with people I had a girl in an event last month that it was in Ohio she drove 27 hours from New Jersey slept 12 in her car because there was a snowstorm I ate in clothes her name's Elisa she comes all the way just to meet me I go what were you thinking right. you should have turned back right. she's right. like no I had to meet you That's phenomenal. and it was like oh my god I don't, and I haven't been on the show for two years. Right. This was something else that she saw, and I thought, I, we can't wait for these traditional outlets of communication or, 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 again, someone else or something else to say I'm valuable enough to do it. Opportunity is everywhere to have these conversations. This girl saw what I was doing on social, became a trainer herself, lost weight. She has a full ta trainer book. And, and, and now she's coming to events that I'm speaking at right. and, and, and getting her clients to come. Yeah. But that's, that's like... Yeah, no, it's, it's, a, it's a unique position as we opened up to be in a position where you can touch so many people and it's entertainment, but however, it has a, a, a deeper meaning than yeah. that because it's that human interest story that you spoke about. It's like it, what you're doing means a lot more than someone, hey, who's, you know, on Broadway. Right you know, putting on a show. Yeah. yeah, no, but it's also tough because even with Loser, the, the magic of that show has nothing to do with the trainers. Mm. It's the people that are willing to tell their story and really share their struggle. And I've had people that have done great posts of the show and kept their rate off and have people put every single pound and more back on. And what are those conversations about? Now, nobody knows that I still talk with every one of them, mm. that I'm still in touch, that I'm still working through things. I, I literally have a text thread with all my contestants my last season. There are other, on the phone, where's my phone? They're like going like, Facebook picture, real picture. Facebook, <laughs> you know, it's just, because it's like, they're all going through the struggle of how do I find my way? How do I get back into a rhythm? Mm -hmm. You know, I send workouts, or it, but it's all like, it, I do like the television point of view because it does open up access, mm -hmm. but I'm, it's my duty to find other ways to, mm -hmm. to, to message out and to work together and, and collaborate, you know? Yeah, I mean, to funnel it all down into the social media environment and let it spread is a 
the best way to get your message out there? It's the best way. I did my top nine for Instagram, and it was all body shots, and I don't post that many. Mm. But all nine were the most liked, and I'm like, so are people here for TNA, or are they here for my message? And I'm gonna, I get to control the toggle on that. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's tough, because I think there are people that are following me for my message. I would say actually the most are. But there's a lot of accounts there that have millions of followers, and they could write a nice message down, and you wouldn't know it because it's all the visual, mm-hmm. you know. And yeah. I feel like we're at a point where people feel like that's what they have to do to get the message out. And I, and I don't know if I necessarily agree. Mm-hmm. For our audience' sake, mm-hmm. and for my sake, because I don't know, uh, mm-hmm. how do you get to where you are now? In other words, you're. Oh, that's the question. So no, no. no. So <laughs> we were talking with the athletic background. Yeah, because, because I remember you mentioned before that you, she was on. No, American I was a fan Gladiator. of the show. And, and everyone that was a gladiator right. was a real athlete. Yeah. They were real yeah. athletes. Right. So, but but I don't know that backstory mm. yeah. from you. So, por favor. Okay. Um, um, I think it's kind of a the athletic side. First of all, I'm genetically. Uh, a lottery winner. <laughs> if I show you pictures of my folks in the 70s, you're like, shit, your mom's pretty buff. You know, my dad, dad lifted weights, my mom, avid dancer, field hockey player, great genes, so it's Swedish, German, Polish, Danish. That's my background. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I, I think I got goods. But, you know, we started early. Uh, I did gymnastics as a kid. I ended up doing it for 12 years. Mm-hmm. Started bringing other modalities of movement. My p- parents are both coaches. Mm-hmm. So they understood and encouraged me to be interested in what I was in. Now, my sister did music. You know, we, we didn't all have to do the same thing. Uh, but they encouraged us to seek out things that we enjoyed. And they worked really hard to provide that for us. Right? I thank my mom and dad for that. Um, but it started that. And, you know, I was always good at stuff, but never the best. Mm-hmm. Like, I was always team captain, but I was like... In gymnastics, I was always like first or second up, which means I'm gonna land a solid eight, maybe a nine, but I'm not the star, right? Mm, interesting. But, Consistent. But they knew I was a stick. And for the audience, uh, Jen is from Illinois, I yeah. believe, and that is probably probably one of the most competitive areas for gymnastics for women's gymnastics. Yeah, like, I was the Midwest okay, is I, kind of. You wouldn't know. I, I, yeah, yeah, I was nowhere near Olympians, but I was at the gym four hours a day. Like it was a lot. It was. It was a lot of practice. So, like I said, it was good. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I did, you know, I did all the flips and shit, but it's a lot of time. So, um, so did that, and then I remember graduating high school and be like, I want to do something new. This is a funny story. I'll crack up then. <clears throat> so I'm like, the rowing team. I'm gonna go to Kansas. Yes, they have a river there. I'm gonna go, and uh, uh, I walked on, really excited. Met some of my best friends that I still have today, and I was garbage. I am, I am, I am a. Fast twitch. You were done in like three seconds, right? You had, getting like, in, getting in and out of the boat she's at like second, aerobic yeah. threshold. <laughs> so, I gotta sit down. Oh, you know what I know it. <laughs> it was literally at 20 seconds. I'm like, I'm I'm busted here. Yeah. There's nothing. And a sprint in rowing yes. is easily in a boat over six minutes individual for me. Like a 2K easily eight eight ten. Oh, those guys are it lactate is, freaks. And mental pain cave Mm -hmm. like they're artists I don't know how they stay so I was garbage I did I did it for two years I I I worked hard I proved like so much and I was still one of the worst in the team so I'm in the weight room and this is the time where all the athletes share the weight room and the throws coach was really good buddies with the the um the rowing coach right and throws coach Doug Reynolds who was my college track coach was like, wow, look at this athlete. She must be great. Look at the nervous system. I was doing only lifting. And and the rowing coach was like, oh, not quite as good as you would think. Like, <laughs> she's pretty bad. They row. And Doug was like, do you mind if I can talk her into throwing? Rob's like, hey, it's her decision. I'm totally up to her, whatever. So Doug approaches me. And Doug, you know, was an incredible uh, discus thrower himself. And he wanted me to do hammer. And I was like... Oh, the, th- the ball chain thing? I'm like, absolutely not. It's going to be bad. Uh, anyway, he, he was very convincing. He thought I could be really good. And he goes, please transition over. Let me train you up. This is what your body's built for. Well, fast forward. So I walked on end of my sophomore year, but since my red shirt clock had already started, I couldn't, I couldn't take a year off. Right. So I only had to do about three years of throwing. First year, I was garbage because hammer throw. It's the longest throw there is. There's a lot of opportunity for mistake, but there's a lot of <laughs> opportunity to fix it and then mess up again. Uh, anyway, uh, I ended up uh, walking on, earning a scholarship after my second year, uh, and then you know almost won conference. I got second place, went to nationals, 
you know, not bad. I was a walk-on. You know what I mean? And the dog cried. He's like, I can't believe we did it. It's amazing. <laughs> no, it was incredible. But he was one of the first people that really believed in me. He pulled me out because I was the worst. No one was talking to me in rowing. Mm. He's like, no, 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 you've got something. I go, you're crazy. Mm. I don't believe you. He's like, trust me. Mm. You know, and I put my trust in him. And that, it's where I think that's how I know how to coach people at the bottom because I've been there a lot. And, you know, after multiple attempts at the bottom, that's it's not so scary. I'm, no, I'm not afraid of failure. Right. I'm not af- afraid of dropping a bar. I'm not afraid of going to a meet and not getting one hammer out of the ring and messing up and messing up and messing up. And then I'm like, oh, I'll nail it in the meet. Hmm. It's great mental toughness. It's great, like, texture. Yeah, I worked with track and field at UT, and when you get oh, to yeah. the throws... I remember talking to the throws coach there, and I, I believe her name is Rose, if she's still there. Oh, uh, great, great lady, great coach uh, for the women's team. And she said to me, it takes typically somewhere between uh, four and ten years for a thrower to, to like hit their groove. The reason I bring that up is for you to be able to get conference in oh, under yeah. three years. That's pretty remarkable because you were just yeah. kind of learning how to throw at yeah. that point. Well, I fell right? down a lot too. <laughs> right, right. Because technically it's so difficult. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's 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 the precision. It's the right push with the right patience. Mm-hmm. Throwing is beautiful when you when you hit it, you know. But man, it's a special sport. But plus, I mean, all you do is lift. I mean, my let me tell you, I I, I had. I had size 10 jeans that I couldn't pull up over my butt. I mean, it, you're, all you do is squat mm-hmm. and lift and just get big, stay quick, and I'm fast. surprised you didn't try out for the bobsled team because they would have recruited somebody that's like you. That's too much running. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Even that's too much, huh? Uh, oh, yeah. That's two, a good point. Three to five seconds for her. Yeah. Three, maybe. Tops. Tops, you know. But the gymnastics, that's interesting because Dr. G and I have had that conversation several times. And um, the... F- that type of fundamental or foundational sport, I feel like you could do anything oh, yeah. after you do I that. I mean, my brother's 6'5", 300 pounds. He started in gymnastics. You know, walk the line, seat drop, walk the beam, you know, mm-hmm. jump over the... Co- like, we all started at four or five years old. We all did park district gymnastics. I mean, I used to teach it for years. It's the best. They just... Because the kids... I call it phys, uh, physical literacy. Mm-hmm. You know, I think if we can teach kids early about how they can move their bodies, confident in space, we're not going to find them where I arrive with them in their 20s, 30s, 40s, 60s, whatever, nervous to go to the gym because they don't understand. They're like, this is my quad, right? And I'm like, no, that's your bicep. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, they don't understand, so the fear keeps them from going. Mm-hmm. So if I can start them at 3, 4, 5, mm-hmm. you know, keep, let's keep PE in cl- uh, classes in schools, for God's sakes. Oh, my God another issue um but that literacy of you know the, the 10 physical skills right coordination balance power all that it's 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 critical yeah, there, we're, we're, there, there was a study done many years ago where they took a bunch of uh, a couple of three-year-olds they put them in a playroom they created the same exact playroom on the other side of a glass for uh collegiate athletes Huh. And they had to mimic what their counterpart on the other side of the glass was doing. In other words, how the children played. And they had to mimic the whole thing. And they calculated all of their, uh, you know, all, all the data that came off of them as it relates to heart rate and how much, how many calories they're burning and all. So they said it's the equivalent of running a marathon. That's how much after four hours they were completely exhausted and the three-year-olds kept on doing what they do. So it just tells you a little bit about movement and energy production. Sure. A child at three, four, five years old that's putting that much energy into movement. And you take them and you stick them in a classroom Mm -hmm. for uh, six hours or Mm -hmm. seven hours. Their, Their nervous system needs to develop. Their skeleton, their musculoskeletal system needs to develop. And we're putting them in these early education. This room would be a great early education program. Of course. Like, this is oh, the kind of facility yeah. that the kids need to Turn be in. Space. But a desk and a chair yeah. for five-year-olds, six-year-olds, when their nervous system is growing at such a rapid rate. Yeah, what is that called? It's called a cross-crawl pattern. There's a new yeah. one that, that, that mm-hmm. have you, it's, it's, it's fascinating. The way it's like, that's where they develop so yeah. quickly to because they're neurologically... Mobility. Yeah. yeah. So you're saying put movement in between the lessons. I don't think the Finns should. are doing it now. The Finns are, I think their school system changed over for every hour of classroom time. It's 45 minutes in the classroom, and then they open the door, and they dump the kids outside to play for 15. Ah. So I think that's, if I recall, mm-hmm. that's what they're doing now currently. And there's no homework, 
and and there's a couple other things. I think there's a limitation on the amount of academic days, but it's all about play because they recognize the correlation right. between neural development, cognitive mm-hmm. development, and movement. Yeah. I mean, they, they're, they're intertwined. They, yeah. They're not separate, the, which is what you're saying. Yeah, they, the, the plasticity of the nervous system is just so, you know, it, it needs information from the time you're, you're mm-hmm. born and you go through the first decade of life. You're supposed to be engaging in your environment and moving. Mm-hmm. Uh, that allows your brain to develop, develop new connections. Uh, the, the part of the brain that we want our kids to develop, we want them to be more intelligent, right? But mm-hmm. their cognitive improvement is going to come when their body develops. As, right, because so all that information if, comes to the cerebellum, and then from there, it shoots up into the frontal lobe. Frontal where cortex you develop makes it map. So, yeah. how people argue about well, cell phones? Look at what we're learning. Yeah. It's education, mm-hmm. you know, but that's yeah. sedentary. Mm-hmm. Do you yeah, know what I mean? We're not sedentary. involving the body. Right. So, but our brains were taught like, well, go play, go outside, build something, make something, mm-hmm. come back before it's dark, you know. And I feel like even that development. Even if it's not, even when I was sitting, not moving, it's not moving, but I sat and I learned patience. I learned protocol. I learned, like, I, I, I want, let my mind wander. Mm. Where do I feel like yeah. going? Daydreaming. Mm. You know what I mean? Whereas mm. I'm just talking with someone or Snapchatting someone or looking at filters and, and obsessing over this mm-hmm. versus, like, my head and my heart, you know? Right, right. So it's interesting. Yeah, no, we're, we're in definitely uncharted Dr. G, water. you have three kids. I only have one. You have three. I so, you, Ben, you're right there in that wheelhouse yeah. right now. And, and two of them are athletes, uh, and, and I can see how that's, how, you know, I, I look at my daughter's posture. I look at my son, and he's a goalkeeper, and he's got that anterior weight-bearing, you know, that he probably shouldn't have where your head and your shoulders are out in front of you. Um, so it, it is interesting. And from an injury standpoint, I mean, you see these kids come in, they're all coming in with the same injuries, and it's related. Oh. It's related to their posture and how they. That's right. Your head. Oh, forward. that's an epidemic now. Mm-hmm. That'll be an epidemic, and even in the, our world, there's got to be a direct correlation between that and the increase in concussions in contact sports. Mm. <clears throat> yeah, because your your center of pressure is altered because of your behavior on a daily basis. Mm-hmm. When you're in an athletic situation on the field, things can get pretty dicey where yep. your body has to respond. And if your center of pressure is forward, it changes the whole chain and your ability to respond. Well, this is going to sound so stupid, so just keep your giggles to a minimum. I think I have selfie wrist. <laughs> Is she that just a coined thing now. She just coined a new thing. I have he a did great, selfie I have a wrist. Great body work guy, Denver Bear, or Derek McBride, oh. fixed performance. <laughs> and I walk in, I go, Derek, bud, my hand, and it's right at the base, and I'm, I'm showing you where it is, and he's feeling around. He's like, What did you? I'm like, I embrace, I ain't fall, I haven't even, I, talk, I said, Don't giggle. And I go, There's something up, I haven't been doing a lot of overhead press, like, I'm, I'm fine, but there's, and, and he's like, We're trying to replicate the pain. I'm like, Well, it's when I, when I do this. And I was like, and I, you guys can't see this, but I turned my hand and like you hold a cell phone. I'm like, oh. Right in the selfie pose. And it, 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 in that selfie pose, it's replicating this. And so like today when I did kettlebell swings and I was like trying to do clean jerks, I was like, dang, man, that doesn't feel good. Because of that. And that's what well, that's going in there. I'm getting next That's the thing. Here. We could come up with it's a, a quick diagnosis protocol. code. We, we got oh a new God. diagnosis oh, code do. Yeah, yeah, for just doctors. Just copyright. I <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> but, but you know what I mean? So I, and it's funny. Like we have to un, uncoil everything we're coiling up on, mm-hmm. uh, you know, from computers. I mean, I can tell you what, even when I was writing my book, I was trying to sit and type in the pain in my shoulders and my thoracic spine. I'm like, I, it, 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 I got headaches. Mm-hmm. And so I, start, I mean, I just started writing my book on my phone. I would walk and then put the dictation microphone on and I would just talk into my notes section, mm-hmm. edit it, send it, then put it in Word. It's, because I, I had less pain. It's so interesting that, that we're hearing this from an athlete who... Clearly, movement and, and body position is very important. Yeah. So, so it's been mastered. When, when she has to do the behaviors that we have now of dealing with the iPads and the phones and the computers, it actually physically bothers you. It gives yes. you headaches and pain. Oh, yeah. Whereas the rest of us are just collapsing into this. <laughs> <laughs> Speak for yourself, our body, <laughs> And our bodies are not communicating with us. At least well, your, your body is telling you yeah, something. Yeah, but you don't know what you don't know. I got to be at a level where I was very, you know, neurologically connected, mm-hmm. or I understood the biomechanics and the setup and the placement and the structure and the posture and whatever. So to go back, I feel it. 
if you've never had that background, the physical literacy, the knowing of what it feels like to be aligned or, uh, you know, engaged evenly, balanced in your body, mm. um, you don't know what you're missing. You got you to step in shit to appreciate a free boot. You ever hear that? Absolutely. Okay. I've heard that. And I tell my clients, patients, uh, that I tell them, listen, the reason why you train hard, the reason why uh, you train hard is you, you exploit these things. It's basically... Uh, as soon as you start to train and warm up, you're like, oh, this doesn't feel right. Mm-hmm. Something's not right. Oh, this is, I spent seven hours on the computer yesterday. Yeah. But yeah. unless you do, unless you really understand the, the, your movement and you actually train, then you'll not, if you're a couch potato, it, it won't matter. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know? And it's also, I call it body talk. It's also something I talk about in my book, but, you know, it's from what you eat and the way you, your body responds, indigestion, acne. Uh, even constipation, like what does your body do? Low energy or oppositely, are you energetic? Are you hungry in an hour mm-hmm. or, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. Also the way your body feels. Uh, people are just, if they could just level up self-awareness, how are they feeling? How is it moving? How, the way that if I put a new uh, beginner, you know, runner on a treadmill at a 10.0, mm. they would start and they'd be like, it's too much for me. Mm-hmm. Okay, limitation, understand feedback, let's lower it make the adjustment mm-hmm. and we can make those same adjustments outside the gym in mm-hmm. the way we eat food or the way we move I mean I had a, the way I was breathing I'm, I'm very much a vertical breather we all are we're, we're up on our shoulders and mm-hmm. our are like so I had to learn mm-hmm. to get into my belly because all the coaching I'm really yelling up here and I would try to make you hear me and I was bracing my core versus talking from gut, my diaphragm. gut my diaphragm allowing the air to go mm-hmm. now my voice you know and um, and by learning that, I understood the difference. And so my, my trick was every time I touch my cell phone, I'm like, oop, reset posture. I'm like, here, here, take a breath and get, mm-hmm. right? I do that with my clients. I go, anytime you touch your phone, just take a swallow of water. Whatever habit oh, yeah. you're trying to do, whether it, 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 water, mm-hmm. uh, posture, stretch, just so you can do it, do your do it thoracic, whatever, mm-hmm. whatever it is. Just start there because that volume of repetition mm-hmm. at 70 to, 70 to 100 touches a day, I think, is the average. Mm-hmm. We're going to be making some changes. Oh, yeah. And yeah. there's yeah. nothing better than progress mm-hmm. and, right. you know, evidence of success. You know, because then you're like, shit, I'll keep, I'll keep doing this. Yeah. Uh, what was the process like for becoming a coach on The Biggest Loser? You're asking yeah, me how I became The position. Biggest Loser? <laughs> how many times How'd have you, you heard become that? such a loser? Uh, how you doing? You know, it's, it's not so much in a joke. People will... St- I was actually went to the play. Uh, I saw Hamilton finally in Denver a week ago. And this woman goes, Jen, you're the biggest loser. And I was like, <laughs> yeah. hi. Yeah, it's really sweet. Nice to meet you. Uh, I, you're so I, I, sweet. I'll take it with such gratitude. Um, it was actually, uh, as life goes, not linear. Um, I had been in the industry working for a bit. Um, ironically, Randy Bernstein was the guy that casted me for American Gladiators. He, years later, he's like, is this still you Like emailing me? I'm in L.A. at this point. I'm working at Joe's Gym with Kamar, ironically. Wow, that's crazy. And um, basically the first call was, we want you to, you know, possibly be a trainer on the show. I mean, I, I take a call, I go in, I don't get past anything. I, I just, I think I was green, I don't think I was confident, and I, uh, I just wasn't a fit. So great. A couple years go by, I, they call me in again, and Randy goes, hey, I'm connecting you with this woman, Allison, she's doing the casting, we think you're perfect, um, would you please c- come in? Go through it all, this was the year Anna Corner covered out your job. I'm, I mean, I, I got past the first interview, the second interview, I'm at the ranch, we do a whole thing. Anna Kornikova gets it. Wow. And I was super bummed because I was like, I thought yeah. I like nailed it. You're like this is like, come on. I am the biggest loser, you know? And I didn't get it. And, um, and you know, I, I trust the way life goes. I trust when doors open and when doors don't. Mm. And I was like, all right, I, I, I'm good. And three more years went by before I got another call from Allison. She was, you're gonna think that this is crazy, but I'd really like you to come in again. And I was like, you think you think it's, really? All right. And at this point, by the way, it's been five years since the first time, which means five more years of growth, not just of my business and our understanding of the body and coaching and those thousands and thousands of reps, but it was like practice for myself, mm. knowing who I am, mm. knowing my value. Um, and I know that that's a, I don't want to make, create a demystification, but like, 
I knew I had something to offer. Yeah. Um, and I knew I was a good coach. And I knew I would do things differently. Um, and I essentially went in not giving a shit. I treated it like a date. If you're interested in me and we get along, call me back. If not, this is my number. Mm. I'm going to be okay. I know I have value. I love my life. I don't need to be on TV. Mm. And so when it all kind of happened, again, everything, interview, this, and by the way, this time, I didn't even get ready. I had, like, my hair was bunned up. I had a cap on. I'm like, I've literally got 40 minutes. I've got to go back. i got a client. Right. I'm like, hey, whatever. And uh, there was a sense of, I think, my confidence and that set, that stature, that, that grounding in your, who you are yeah. that they picked up on. And by the end, I remember I was in an office with all the big decision makers, and I was like, guys, I'm going to help you with your show if you need the help. But I, I, I'm like, I don't have an agent. I don't need to do this. I would love to do it and help and make a difference. And I think, ironically, like, pause, the two, three years before, I'm at the ranch. I remember the doors open. I've got my hands on my hips. I go, you guys ready to work out? Like, who was that? <laughs> but I was doing... That's awesome. Did what I thought yeah. they needed to see right. or who I needed to right. be in order to be good for them. And Interesting. clearly I didn't get the job. Mm-hmm. Right. And the year I didn't give a shit. I don't want to say I didn't give a shit. The year I wasn't trying to be something that wasn't Jen, mm. I just allowed Jen to come through mm. and I got it. And isn't it the bigger message? You know what I mean? It's not about changing and... Yes, there's a level of transformation that goes, I think, with life and, and challenge and push and pull, but it was a revealing. Mm. You know, when you start to reveal what's really within you, mm. that's where magic happens. Because I think a lot of times we're hiding the things that we're scared of, mm-hmm. or we're hiding the things about ourselves that we don't think you're going to like very much. Mm. But when you hide that stuff, you stu- you hide all the good shit, too. So you can't turn off that gauge. Mm. So I'd say, all right, I'm going to probably mess up a couple times. Mm-hmm. Um, but I know I'm a thousand percent here for my contestants. It's a thousand percent real. It means everything to me. And regardless of what happens on the show, win, lose, what they air, I know I've made a difference for these people. And that was my purpose. And by doing that and being Jen, first and foremost, trainer on a show, second, my contestants, I mean, in my first season, I, I, we didn't lose a way in we didn't lose a challenge. In 10 weeks, they literally had to disband our team. I was, the retired is ticked off because I am competitive and I like to win. Right, uh, right. <laughs> but it was through camaraderie and it was through really putting them first that I was successful. It wasn't about me. And when I auditioned previously, I made it all about me. Um, but the greatest thing you could do for this person across the table from you is truly let your walls down, be vulnerable, because it gives them the space and opportunity to give their real self back. Mm-hmm. And that's when you have real connection. And once you create connection, you have trust. Once you have trust, well, now we can go anywhere together. Whether it's a leader, whether it's a teacher, mm-hmm. a physician, that's everything. That's what we're doing. And it's our responsibility to do so. And, like, and that happens through conversation and hearing people's stories. I think uh, like the moment you think you've made it, the moment you think you got your it all set, that's a scary day. You should always be a student. I love being a teacher. I love being in charge. <laughs> I love leading the way. But my uh, desire, and, and sometimes it was delayed desire. I'm like, I got it, I know it. <sighs> Whoa. You know, mm-hmm. nobody likes to know it all and it doesn't get you anywhere. And the moment I started to really allow myself to be a student again, treat every opportunity like it's my first one, it changed things to me. And that feeling of not knowing, of struggling, um, it's such an icky feeling, but that's the texture of our life. Because uh, you, how could you know pride without challenge, right? Mm-hmm. How could you know uh, the, the, the fear you know, uh, how could you not, I should say, that the, the success or the pro, uh, not the pride, the um, happiness without knowing the sadness and the fear behind it. You've got to play both sides. I mean, I've had a hard year, and it's brought me to the best place I've been in years, you know? And I think that like, a great tool for anybody listening, like, don't, don't shy away from hard stuff. Don't shy away from hard conversations. you got to go for it. I think the struggle is really what's sometimes missing, mm-hmm. you know? For the contestants on The Biggest Loser, what, what do you think is the most valuable thing you teach them for them to have sustained results? So... Because they, they do leave the show, right? The, the, this is for anybody that's left from the show. This is for anybody that's listening that, uh, that's in life. If you do not look at a customized approach to the way you're going to look at your behavior change, you're not going to find success. What I liked about the ranch is it created uh, a consistency, a replicable day... Mm-hmm. 
um, but it was under very different terms. And for them, what my, my job was and my goal was within that microcosm of this space and this challenge, they all had different systems for me. You know, your morning, they do it in the morning. You're not, they do it later. Take a nap, sleep in. We don't need to do that. Mm -hmm. um, if you don't look at your yourself for the answer, if you look at what's on your plate, what did you do to lose the weight? What did you do? You're, you're looking the wrong direction for the answers. Because who you are is always going to tell you the solution. If you have a pot, I call, I call them like a, a, a behavior pot holes. If you know there's a behavior that you always have, Right? It's just like any pothole. You ride home and you hit that pothole, you're mm -hmm. like, is, are my wheels still on? You're going to remember when you're crossing those avenues again. Mm -hmm. Like, wait, I remember this. Yeah, it's, oh, it's the next street and you swerve. Mm -hmm. So for that person, I can't tell you the same pothole that to work for you. It's like, okay, I know that every time at lunch, my, my team of people, I bring my lunch and they take me out and I, and I don't have the courage to say no. It could be a meal, it could be a workout. Fine, so you know that pothole's there, so move around it. But stop looking outside yourself at the answer. Because the, the, the ultimate, the big picture, what I see, um, beyond that whole being lost at first, is that most people are operating kind of half in, half awake. There's a great analogy. You'll probably appreciate it, Dr. G. So um, a baby inside the womb is actually living with only half its heart because there's no oxygen yet, right? It's all liquid. We're all, we're all inside. And then this moment of miracle of birth, the baby comes through, and the other side of the heart has to turn on and activate in order to live and breathe here out in the open. Mm -hmm. And just like we are uh, living with half our hearts, most people are, I think, on this planet. They're living halfway, and, and they don't even know it, and that's the tough part, and that's what we do as coaches and trainers, right? And what, I'm, what I feel, and yeah, that sustainable health change you talked about, is that they start to believe and realize that there's nothing missing from you. There's nothing that you, oh, Jen, I, I just need you every day. This is not about me. Mm -hmm. This is not about somebody making your food for you. You're not deficient. You have everything you need mm -hmm. to be success. I just got to turn on the other side of your heart. You're born ready. You're, it is your birthright to be great, mm -hmm. to be successful. We just got to turn that, you got to activate you. Yeah. And I think that people believe through evidence. That's why, I mean, Evan's like, why do you love training people? I'm like, I don't know. I'm not that, I'm not that good of a trainer. I'm a good trainer. Mm -hmm. they're, they're away. Go to Gutter Peterson's gym. He's got 100 machines, and he, he's all over the place. It's so creative. He's way more creative than me, right? Mm -hmm. But to me, I use health and fitness as this vehicle mm -hmm. to have a greater conversation. Is it really... You know, your 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 you know your the weight you want to lose is it really your bench press holding you back? There are other things, and if I can show you uh, progress in here, even if it goes from oh my god, I jogged a quarter mile without stopping for the first time in my life, mm -hmm. what else is now possible? You think in the gym and it starts to live outside the gym. That's what this man. That's what, that's where I love this 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 mm -hmm. conduit of, of, of teaching and coaching, because it's not about the quarter mm -hmm. mile. I, I can care less. I have a, lot, a million ways I can help someone lose weight. But it's about them believing and investing, and I show them evidence in here how capable they are. And that's it. Yeah, giving them, giving them that independence where they can, they, they feel comfortable where they can do it on their own. Right, and it's That's great, the key. What, a lot of times what yeah. happens is people will lose the weight, and the, the actual, the fear of trying to keep it off, mm -hmm. and the pressure to keep it off, almost acts against it's them. It's overwhelming. and like, ah, oh, now they just gain it back, and just be fat again and not have this pressure. Mm. Yeah, you know, yeah. Like, like I, I told you, I was, I'm genetically, I won the lottery, but I, this is not a mistake. Mm -hmm. Every day I make choices to bring out the best side of me. When I'm not moving my body, when I'm eating bad, when I'm drinking too much alcohol, it is a dangerous neighborhood up top. Mm. I am rude, I am short-tempered. If I'm in a relationship, I'm not sexual. Mm. I am short with my Lyft driver, mm -hmm. right? Like, I... Shift, I change, and that's not the woman I want to be because I'm, if I'm not taking care of this woman, I can't be who I'm supposed to be. All right, so what is a day in the life of Jen taking care of herself? Food, food, food. I am hangry if you don't feed me. Um, movement is my medicine. I think meditative. It's all glucose. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll know. Like, oh, my God, I'm going to eat, like, right now. Like, I've got yeah. three minutes. And it goes from zero to 60. Like, oh, yeah. There's, like, no in between. Mm -hmm. I would you know, say. It's not like, oh, I was, I was hungry an hour ago. Say no, no, I was fine five minutes ago. Oh yeah, I think I, I mean upwards of when I was like, I would say even 22 to 23, I'd come, I'd, I'd be on the phone call with my dad, and he just be like, hey Jennifer, why don't you, uh, why don't you just eat a sandwich real quick, give me a call back. 
I go, what? <laughs> what is, what? I don't need a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like crying and so mad at him and I'm like I didn't have a sandwich I'm like hey daddy I ate a sandwich it's so much better you become a whole different person oh my god I mean this man has dealt with me since forever and he's, t- he's given me so much patience but the food is, is legitimate um, but the day in the life you know it, 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 yeah the funny yeah I'm being funny yeah it's always food but like movement uh, even if it's 30 minutes I try to move every day um, but I'm a connector. My relationships are my favorite thing in my life. I like talking with, you know, whether it's like my best friends or people I work with or or people through social media that I can connect and give an awful real coaching back to. Uh, I, I love it. I absolutely love so it. So it's a 30-minute a day exercise routine. I mean, I'd love to spend two hours every day with a little chalk and a right. barbell and just take my time and eat some jerky, but that, that's not always possible. You know, I got, I got places to be. A little chalk <laughs> and a barbell. <laughs> How many times do you, do you hear a female saying that? And the jerky. jerky. Yeah. I got, I just, Laura's lean, it's, it's like no antibiotics, no hormones, no crap in it, and it's like, you know, it matters when you're lifting. You want to put a snatch over your head. You got to eat good shit. You have to. Tell us about your business. Which part? I know you got it. Well, you have the book. Tell us a little bit about the book. And, and uh, I think the long and short is uh, TV is, is one platform in which to communicate. But uh, I need to get back out there, and I want to do it in other ways. And we've already talked about in this podcast how important the value of social media and, and tech and digital is. Mm-hmm. But I. I, I, I refuse to do it without real connection. I refuse to go down that tech lane without keeping the heart, the passion, uh, the guidelines, my pillars of our live and give to show people tools through living and then tools through giving. That means giving back, mm-hmm. giving over to someone else, mm-hmm. giving up, how that affects you, right? And if you can harness, I think, th- those two pillars of live and give, you are able to transform, and not just once over, but throughout your life. Because one thing that we know is true is change is going to happen, right? Mm-hmm. So it's a lot about, for me, the business side is of being thoughtful. This is, I don't do partnerships for the, it, it, it's not the dollar side. I've walked away from a lot of money in different contracts. It's finding the right brands that um, understand my message knowing it's not about Jen, Jen, Jen. It is about being there for the consumer, the civilian, the whoever that needs the support. And as long as the brand messaging is inside, uh, aligned, mm-hmm. you're able to do these amazing collaborations. I speak at tons of events of the year. Mm-hmm. For, I'm calling it like the Live Give Tour, you know, from like mm-hmm. a SOAR next event at Summerstrong to Naval Bases this fall to I'm working with Shape Activewear and I'm doing events for them. It's really all about collaborating, elevating others, because we're at a point where, especially with social media and everything, people are getting a little weird. They're getting mm-hmm. a little twitchy. Like, well, these are my followers. This is my event. Mm-hmm. I'm like, well, how would I host an event? And I promote you the whole time. Mm-hmm. Because we're in this together. Yeah, that's a, that's a weird space we're in right now. Yeah, I mean, the yeah. first thing I said to you was, we walked in today, I'm like, this is a service industry. Mm-hmm. We are we are here to provide a service for our people and mm-hmm. our patients, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Uh, when, when, since when is it about me and my picture and mm-hmm. my bikini body to see the interaction to see this mm-hmm. joy to see the energy to see the fun mm-hmm. this is what it's about mm-hmm. and, and, and I, I you know yes you can live stream but like that's why I try to get the touch points of getting in front of people mm-hmm. I told you I see you nodding I'm touching your arm I see you're here I see your progress like and by me I can do this once with him and now I can follow them on their social media and I can use Instagram or whatever right to my advantage, mm-hmm. to let them know, hey, I see you. Mm-hmm. I literally had a girl I met a year ago, I'm not going to say her name. She came to a, um, I'll keep it short because I know we're kind of tight on time. Um, she uh, came to an event specifically to watch her sister's kids while her sister came to the event. Mm-hmm. Okay. And she goes, I go, hey, we'll just stay. I go, keep the kids. She's like, no, 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 I'll bring them out. I go, what the, it's a gym. Let the kids play around. That's what I do with my folks. I'm like, throw, play around. Don't touch the heavy weights because it's whatever. Right. And come and just listen. And, and she started asking more questions than anybody. She has a big life change ahead of her. I go, when you're ready for me, I'm here. Tag me in one of your photos. If you take a picture and tie the actual photo, it links me to your account and I can see what you're doing. I'm like, leave me a message. Write me what you need help. And I go, it could be a picture of your shoes. I don't need to see some sweaty mm-hmm. selfie. It doesn't have to be this thing. Just take a picture of your shoes. I know you need it. I mean, t- she put up the bad signal like a week ago. She's got a picture of her shoes, and her friend's like, wow, cute shoes. Da, 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 da. There's literally nothing on there. I'm like, she's ready. I wrote a direct message. I'm like, how are we? Where are you at? What steps are you taking? That's you fantastic. Know, and, that, and so that is why it's like I can't do it without social media because look what I did. 
you know, we talked about physical literacy. What about the literacy of your intuition, your gut, reading someone? Well, we're going to go down a rabbit hole right now. I know, I know. That's 100%. Exactly. I, but, like, but, like, the less, the more contact. You talked about the physicality of how it affects your, yeah. your neurological mm-hmm. connections and development. It's well, like, no question about it. How about yeah. emotional IQ? Like, mm-hmm. This is a whole other podcast. You know, one question I wanted to ask you yeah. now, being the fitness director for Shade and, um, you know, traveling around the country and the world, uh, I've noticed an emphasis in the last, I would say, five to ten years as there being a greater acceptance publicly to strong women. Yeah. When I say strong, I mean, like, physically strong. Yeah. Like, you know, um, we're seeing it in the gyms. We're seeing more women do Olympic lifting. We're seeing more women do strongman events. You know these type of tough yes, mutter things. Yeah, the evolution things. of the female role. Yeah, you know? it's 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 to me. You know what I want to get your impression of that because being in the industry now for you know over 25 yeah. years, I'm like you know what it's not all about uh, bar classes and um, not that there's anything wrong with that. Oh, yeah, and, hard. and yoga, um, they're very hard. But there's a big emphasis, a big push on women being, being strong, strong. Yeah. being really strong. Uh, I think that, you know, it's funny, we physically manifest sometimes what we're emotionally going through. And sometimes when women are trying to grow their inner strength, they work on their physical strength. You know, it's a, uh, sometimes your body's got to start to believe for your insides mm-hmm. to believe, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, but the, the role of the female is changing. And I think uh, there's a lot of arguing, like, you know, it's kind of like this girl power and rights. And I'm like, yo, man, we just, it wasn't 1950, it wasn't that long ago. Honey, how was your day at work? The old, the old cartoon commercials of like, let me crack a beer for you. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I burned dinner. I can get that, you know, the apron. It doesn't mean it's bad. Right. Look at how far we've come. Right. And the acceptance, I would say, from the male and female community, I love allowing that progression, that of lightning speed in some cases, mm-hmm. has been exceptional. I love it. But I think that a lot of times instead of pulling the finger about being suppressed, uh, look at the amount of women that waited out of their own self-consciousness. Mm-hmm. You, know, you can't point fingers out all the time. It's scary to be the ones that make the change. It's scary to be, whether you are Rosa Parks, the back of the bus, or the, the, one of the first women that started to pick up a barbell and really move weight. Mm-hmm. It, it, it starts in different ways, and it starts to arise in others. And I, I don't know, I, I actually love it. But I think it's a great, it's a, it's a nice process of discovery. Mm-hmm. Each woman should take her journey. You know, for me, like I said, barbell in a little bit of time. Mm-hmm. I love feeling strong. I love picking up things. But it's not just so I can say, like post my snatch PR on my Instagram. I like that when I'm on an airplane, I can get my bag out and I can get yours too. Mm-hmm. No problem. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I love that when I see someone strong, I can help someone out of the car. Mm-hmm. I love that when my friend's moving, I can help them. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, that's what I care about. I mean, for me, it's refreshing because I worked in track and field. So oh, yeah. that was, you know, the, those athletes for me were unlike any athletes on the planet. And I, I, I still feel that way firmly. But, you know, to see it kind of spill over into mainstream where this is like normal, but this is cool. Right. Mm-hmm. I like that. I but, like that a lot. But it's also, even with diversity, you know, I, I worked with a girl at my last job and she talked about how uh, her name is Raquel and, and she's Hispanic. So... For a long time, you know, even cartoons growing up, there weren't any Hispanic cartoons. So she would identify with the minority, whether it was Asian or black, or uh, if it was a bunch of boys, it was the girl. It, so it's identification, and, and now we're actually at the point where we're identifying, you know, Wonder Woman, great, but we having strong female characters, whether it's through ads, whether it's through mu- music and words, whether it's through movies. It could be cart. I mean, I remember watching uh, X Men the cartoon and loving Rogue. Mm-hmm. I remember wanting to learn how to fly, mm. like not in a plane, but fly, right. because Rogue did. Right. That was rad to me. You know, so it's it, it, that, it, it's changing the game, and it's it's really nice. I mean, I I got a, t- uh, a note on Insta- social media. This guy's in South Africa with this five-year-old son. He goes, "Oh my God, he thinks you're like the real Wonder Woman." Yeah. Like that's pretty neat. You know, because here's for me. Fun story. I got to do the cover of Muscle Fitness Hers and Arnold, who was my hero, growing up. And when he was in the men's, we did this whole party. I remember I'm going to the event, and I, I get a call from my dad, who's become a personal trainer in his retirement. And he had a gal that was eight years old, and his, his client's daughter, uh, that would teach big gen workouts at lunch. And she was so inspired by me, you know? That's awesome. And 
And I thought, oh my God, so I'm here, I'm introducing Irma. I go, how funny, I get this call, you don't realize you're reaching, like this eight-year-old girl is doing this, and now when this woman was an eight-year-old girl, I had this man's Conan the Barbarian poster on my wall. Because you know what? He had a long last name and so did I. He had muscles and so did I, and he talked kind of funny and so did I. It was a speech class, you know? And I found myself in him and it, it propelled me. And so whether it's this little boy in South Africa or this little girl that my, is my dad's client's daughter, it, it's, it's, it's really cool. Everything was everything we need to know about that pot, about this podcast, basically was one sentence. Mm -hmm. I had the Conan the Barbarian poster yeah, on my was, wall. I didn't know it was Arnold. I just knew it was Conan. <laughs> and he had the little briefs and the sword. And he was That's the entire podcast, dude. Yeah. We don't need to say anything else. Yeah. That's it. It's yeah. over. You, you can extrapolate the entire podcast from that no, one no, sentence. I didn't know. <laughs> but it was funny because awesome. when I actually understood who Arnold was, I was like, I'm going to be Miss Olympia eight times and beat Arnold. So I started lifting weights in the basement with my dad. That's awesome. You know, he would let me use like fives. He still right. swears. That's why I was so good at bars. But anyway, so. Uh, <laughs> so Dr. G, yeah. final question. Yeah. Your, your energy is absolutely uh, contagious. <laughs> uh, you know, if, 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 if those of you listening, if you were here, you'd be ready to start to Take on the world. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no uh, kidding. Energy is contagious. It's infectious and it's great. Um, but where can people get more of you? So, I made it easy for everybody. Across social media, it's just Jen Wiederstrom. It's J-E-N-W-I-D-E-R-S-T-R-O-M across all platforms. Um, I'm actually looking at developing some of my own podcasts and the conversation bites. Weeder Strong is what I'm going to call it. Love it. Why not? Mm -hmm. um, and just be on the lookout. My, web, my website is Team Jennifer. I have a lot of uh, big events coming up. I don't know when this is going to be released, but from events to uh, different activations and really cool stuff just to, just to get in front of people. And, and, and buy the book. Diet oh, yeah. right mm -hmm. for your type. For your personality personal type. type. Yep. It's basically personality a type. life guide disguised as a diet book. There's a quiz. You find out if you're an organized doer, if you're an everyday hero. A life guide level. disguised as a weight. You know, it's so funny. <laughs> just just on the weight loss thing. Yeah. People who want to lose weight are not, they don't want to lose weight. Yeah, no, right? no, no. They, I make it a lot of fun. Because right. <laughs> if it's not right. fun, you're not going to do it. Yeah. We want the weight loss it. to be the side effect, right? It it's is. exactly so right. It's a good time doing it. the life. It's about the life. I'm going to tell you, you're going to see yourself in my book. Just read it. All right. Yep. Love it. We will. Um, so, listen, I can't thank you enough. Good luck. Continue, you know, continue to touch a lot of people. Great episode. Huh? That's Dr. another G. episode of The Thrivalist Manifesto with Ben V and Dr. G.
Thank you.